from Hollywood, Miss Laureen Tuttle in The Unexpected. The Unexpected. The Unexpected. Life is filled with the unexpected. Romantic, tragic, and mysterious endings to our most ordinary actions. Dreams come true, or dreams are shattered by sudden twists of fate in The Unexpected. But first, a word from your announcer. And now, Lorraine Tuttle, outstanding radio and screen star in Finale, a drama of the unexpected. I couldn't wait any longer. I delayed too much already, putting the terrible moment off from day to day. And now I couldn't put it off anymore. If I did, Kent might learn the truth. Someone might tell him. I thought it my duty to inform you, Mr. Fairfax. What? Mona's never mentioned it? No, the idea was unbearable. I'd have to do it myself, and soon. That afternoon was cold and black and unfriendly. I could feel the darkness closing in. Night was coming early. It pressed against my face, tighter and tighter, until I wanted to scream. Julie! Julie, come here! Hurry! Yes, mademoiselle. Is something wrong? No, no, of course not. I'm quite all right. Why shouldn't I be all right? I thought I heard you call. What? Oh, oh, yes, I, I, I've decided to change my dress. I want to wear black. Black, mademoiselle? Yes, my black crepe. But don't argue with me, Julie. Do what I tell you. But I, I only thought that since you and Mr. Fairfax were going for a drive... I've changed my mind, that's all. I've just changed my mind. Oh, do I have to explain everything to you? Oh, why won't people ever let me live my own life? You're going to tell him today, aren't you? That's really none of your business, Julie. You've decided to tell him today? All right, so I have. There's no point in putting it off. You won't be cruel, will you, mademoiselle? I am never cruel, Julie. Unnecessarily. But I was going to be cruel. You can't get rid of a man who's loved you for years without hurting him. And Kent would be hurt. What difference did it make? I couldn't help it. It would be easier to hurt him. Much easier if... if I had the strength to do it. Where's my gold comb, Julie? Have you mislaid it again? I'm sure it's on the dressing table, mademoiselle. Yes, here it is. Oh. Oh, I didn't see it. Shall I brush your hair? I'm quite capable of doing it myself. Of course. When I need something, I'll ask for it, Julie. Yes, mademoiselle. I'm very sorry. Well, what are you waiting for? Mademoiselle, about the young man this afternoon. What about him? He's very much in love with you, you know. I don't need you to tell me that. But perhaps you should explain to I've him. already decided exactly what I'm going to do. Stop prompting me, Julie. For heaven's sake, let me live my own life. I've already decided exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> I finished putting on my makeup, but my hands were trembling. And I wasn't sure if I'd done it right. Perhaps I'd added a little too much rouge. I didn't know why, but I was nervous. Terribly nervous. 
I'd planned the whole thing so carefully. Nothing could go wrong. And yet I... I was frightened. What time is it, Julie? A quarter of four, mademoiselle. Oh. Now I want to be sure that everything is quite ready. Let's see. He'll come through the door bringing a box of candy or something equally useful. He'll set it on the little table and then... Should I let him kiss me, Julie? I wouldn't know, mademoiselle. Now, don't be difficult, please. When I ask you something, answer. Then I should say it doesn't matter whether you let him kiss you or not. It makes a great deal of difference, Julie. I think I will let him kiss me. And then... Then I'll turn away and sit over here across the room where you can't see me too clearly. Uh, draw the blinds, Julie. I don't want any daylight in the room. It, it isn't flattering, and I always feel more comfortable in the dark. It's almost dark now, mademoiselle. Close the blinds. There. That's much better. Now, shall I bring up the subject abruptly or work the conversation gradually around until I'm ready to tell him? To be abrupt sounds fairer. I suppose you're right. Get it over quickly. He won't understand at first, and, and then I'll get up, face the windows, and, keeping my back to him, make the whole thing quite clear. It's always much more convincing when you don't look at a man in the face. <laughs> I wonder why. I have no idea, mademoiselle. You think you'll be very angry, Julie? Probably. But he'll get over it. Oh, yes. You needn't be quite so positive. I'm sorry. <laughs> After it's over, he'll go storming out of the apartment, forgetting his hat. He always does when he's upset. <laughs> I wonder if he'll come back for it this time. I hope not. And then perhaps I'll keep the hat as a reminder of, of past love. You know, mademoiselle, it won't happen just the way you plan it. Oh, won't it, Julie? We'll see. At this moment, he's in the elevator riding up to this floor. The car stops. He steps out, mumbles something to the operator, and strides up the hall. Right now, he's taking off his hat and straightening his tie. And just a second, he'll ring the buzzer. Well, open the door, Julie. I'm quite ready for him. Quite ready. brought you some candy, Mona. Thank you, darling. I'll leave it here on the table. Oh. All right. Well, don't I get a kiss? Yes, of course you get a kiss. <laughs> That's more like it. We're going for a drive, remember? Yes. But first, let's sit here for a moment and talk. What about? Well, I'll be very frank, Kent. I think we should settle our problem today and not put it off any longer. I didn't know we had any problem, Mona. Oh, Kent, don't be difficult. You must know that something has happened to us. No, I'm, I'm afraid I don't. Well, try to understand what I'm saying, darling. If you haven't been aware of it, that only proves my point. For heaven's sake, what point? That we've been drifting. Drifting apart. Mona, will you please stop beating around the bush and start making sense? Very well, Kent. It comes down to this. We don't love each other any longer. You don't love me. Is that what you mean? Not entirely should be obvious that you've stopped caring or you'd have noticed how I've changed. Have you changed? Yes, very much. Surely you must have sensed it. Sensed it? Well, no. Maybe love makes you blind. Please don't say that, Kent. Why not? Well, because I'm still fond of you. I don't want you to be angry with me. I just can't help my feelings, that's all. I... I can't turn them on and off whenever I choose. You've done pretty well so far. All right, Kent. At least I've been fair. You can't say I wasn't honest. I don't believe you. I don't believe a word you've said. I don't believe that you could stop loving me any more than I could stop loving you. Can't you stop, Kent? I'm sure you can if you try. No, not until you convince me. When I know you really don't care, then I'll stop. But not before. Oh, very well. What's the use of trying to be kind? You may as well know it all. I, I'm leaving town tomorrow. I won't be back, ever. That's very sudden. Yes, it's quite sudden. But Arthur insisted. Arthur? You don't know him, Kent. I didn't myself until a week ago. He's, he's, he's very attractive and quite charming. And, and I'm going to marry him. Do you hear me, Kent? I'm going to marry him. 
I'm going to marry him. I heard you. Is he rich? Oh, Kent, that's very unkind. I want you to leave now. I won't let you talk to me that way. I won't let anyone talk to me that way. Sorry. But for your information, since it seems so important, Arthur is quite well to do. Then I'm sure you'll be happy together. I'm sure of it, too. Now, will you please go? Shouldn't I kiss the bride? Isn't that what I'm supposed to do at a time like this? No. Not until after the wedding. I don't think I'll be able to attend. Thanks just the same. Have fun, Mona. Always have fun. And live a wonderful life. And forget about me. I know that won't take much effort. Goodbye, Mona. And good luck. Can't you... You... You forgot your hat? You think it's all over, don't you? But wait. Fate takes a hand. Wait for the unexpected. And now for the surprising conclusion of Finale, starring Loreen Tuttle, a Hamilton Whitney production, written by Robert Libet and Frank Burt, and directed by Frank K. Danzig. Oh, Ken. Ken, darling. Is everything all right, mademoiselle? <laughs> yes, Julie. Yes, everything's all right. And you were wrong. Wrong? It went just as I expected. Every detail. Then you didn't tell him the truth. I convinced him that we were through. That was enough of the truth. If you say so, mademoiselle. <laughs> and now I'm going to my room for a few minutes. I... I'm very tired. We have a long trip ahead of us tomorrow. <gasps> Can I help you, mademoiselle? No, thank you. No. You must have moved that chair, Julie. I'm sorry. I, I should have told you. Doesn't matter. I'll have to get used to bumping into furniture. I suppose in time, I'll develop a sense of things being close to me. I'm sure you will. But until I do, I'll go barging around like a bull in the china shop. You'll need a lot of patience to put up with me, Julie. Now that I'm going to be blind. Finale starred Miss Laureen Tuttle. Listen soon for another exciting story when one of your favorite motion picture stars meets... The Unexpected. This program was transcribed in Hollywood.